In the last lecture, we added click event handler on this minus button and this plus button. So when I click on this plus button, you will notice that the value one has been logged here. If I click again, two has been logged here. If I click again, three has been logged here. So when we click on this plus button, it is going to increment the value of this product count. In the same way, if I click on this minus button, in that case, it is going to decrement the value of the product count. So our click event handler is working as expected. But if you notice, the value which we are displaying here is the value of the product count. So in the console, it is logging the proper value. That means the product count value is incrementing or decrementing based on whether we click this plus button or minus button. But that value is not reflecting here in the web page. So let's understand why is that and then we will resolve this issue. So if I go to VS Code, from this product details component, we are returning this JSX code. That means when this product details function will be called, this JSX code will be returned. Now we are calling this product details function inside this products component. So when we are using this product details component as an HTML element, it is going to call this product details function and it is going to return this JSX, right? We already know this from our previous lectures. Now, when we are clicking on this plus button or this minus button, it is not going to recall this product details function. That means even when this product count variable has changed, we are not going to return this JSX again. So initially when the page loads, the value of this product count is zero. So that zero will be displayed here using this display formatted product count function and this JSX will be returned. Now, when we click on this plus button or minus button, the value of this product count changes, but we are not returning this JSX again with the updated value of this product count. And that's why in the web page, we always see the initial value of the product count, which is zero. So if I go ahead and change this product count to 10, if I save the changes and if you go to the web page, you will notice that it is displaying 10. Now, if I increment this value, here you will see 11 is logged. If I decrement this value, here you will see 10 is logged. But this initial value here is not changing. That's because this JSX code has been returned when the page loads. After that, when we are clicking on the button, it is not going to call this product details function again. That means it is not going to return this JSX code with the updated product count value. And that's why this value here never changes. It always displays the initial value. And this is the default behavior of React. Now here what we want is when the data changes, that means when the value of this product count variable changes, we want this component to be reevaluated. That means when the value of this product count changes, we want to recall this product details function and we want to re-return this JSX code with the updated value of this product count variable. And by default, the regular variables like this product count is not triggering the re-evaluation. If you have a variable in your component function and if that variable changes, React ignores it. It doesn't care about that. The code here, which we are writing inside this increment product count and decrement product count, it is getting executed because these are the callback functions. So we have assigned these functions to this on click event handler. So these functions will be a callback function. And that's why they are getting executed when we are clicking on these buttons. And one more thing which you need to remember here is that even if we make this function to be called whenever we change the value of this product count, it is not going to work because here, let's say the initial value of this product count is zero. So let's say whenever the value of this product count changes, somehow we are making this product details function to be called. So when this product details function will be called at this line, again, this product count will be set to zero. Okay. So if somehow we are able to call this function, whenever the value of this product count changes, that is not going to work. And this is just for your understanding. It is not going to happen like that, but I just wanted to make it clear here. So remember that 
this function is not going to be called second time after the initial rendering just because a button was clicked or the value of the variable has changed. This component function will not run again. And this is the default behavior of React. So to tell React that when the button is clicked and when the value of this product count variable changes, it should run this component function again. We need to use a function called as use state. So first of all, we need to import that function from this React library. And this time it is going to be a named import. So the name of the function is use state. Now what we can do is inside this product details function, this component function, we can call this use state function. So let's call that. And remember that you can only use this use state function inside a component function. You cannot use it outside of a component function, for example, like this, or you cannot use it inside an inner function. For example, if I want to use this use state inside this function, this inner function, it is also not going to work. Okay, so this use state should always be called inside a component function like this. Also remember that this use state is a so called react hook. There are other hooks as well and we will learn about it as we go along with this course. All these react hooks can be recognized with the fact that they all start with this word use. And all these hooks must only be called inside the react component function. They can't be called outside of the component function and they should also not be called inside of any nested function. Keep this point in mind. The react hook functions must be called directly inside component functions. There is one exception which I will talk about later, but for the moment, this is what you should keep in mind. Now, the first argument of this use state function is the default value, the initial value. So here we want the initial value for this product count as zero. So let's specify zero here. Now this use state function is going to return an array. The first element of that array is going to be a special variable whose value will change. And the second element of that array is going to be a function which we can then call to assign a new value to that special variable. So here what I'm going to do is I am going to create a variable and here I will use array destructuring syntax. Inside this, let's create a variable. Let's call it product count. So this product count is going to store the updated value. So this product count is our special variable and initially it will be set with this value zero. And the second element of this array, which this use state function is going to return is going to be a special function. Let's call it maybe update count. Okay. And now we don't need this product count variable. So let's comment this here. Now in the event handler functions, what we can do is we can use this special function to update the value of product count. Okay. So I will comment these two lines here and let's call this function, this special function. And to this special function, we need to pass the updated value. So here, Let's use this product count. So this variable name, let's pass it here and let's also increment it. So this plus plus operator is going to increment the value of this product count. That means it is going to update the value of this product count. So that will be the updated value and that will be assigned to this product count variable. And that will be assigned by this update count function. Let's do the same thing inside this event handler function as well. So again, I will comment it here. Let's paste this and here let's say minus minus with this. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let's clear everything here and let me click on this plus button. So I clicked on this plus button one time and here we have this error and the error says assignment to constant variable. So that means here we have created these two variables using const keyword. So since we have created using const keyword, we cannot update the value of the variable. So instead of const, let's use let. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page again. Let me clear everything here. Let's refresh the page. And let's click on this plus button again. So nothing has happened here. If I click on this plus button again, you can see 
one is displayed here. If I click on this plus button one more time, nothing has happened. If I click again, then two is displayed here. Now, if I click on this minus button, nothing happened. If I click again, it has decremented the value. Now, why do we have this behavior? That's because here we are using the post increment and post decrement operator. Now, what the post increment and post in decrement operator does is first it returns the original value and then only it updates the value. So here what will happen is when we are saying product count plus plus, it is going to return the initial value. So initial value is zero, right? So first it will return the initial value. That means this product count, this will again get initialized with the value zero. And then it will increment the value of this product count to one. So instead of using the post increment and post decrement operator, let's use pre increment and pre decrement operator. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's refresh the page. And now let's try. So when I click on this plus button, one is logged. I mean, one is displayed here. Two, three, four. When I click on minus, it is decrementing the value. Let's check with other products. So one, two, three, four. Let me click on this minus button. So it is three. Let's check here also. So one, two, three. If I click on minus button two times, it is again decremented to one. So now this plus and this minus button is working as expected. And it is also displaying the updated product count value here in the web page. So when we are using this special function, which this use state function is returning, this function is not only going to assign the updated value to this product count variable, but it is also going to recall this function. It is going to reevaluate this function. Okay. Every time this special function, which this use state function is returning, every time this function is called, it is going to update this variable and it is also going to call this function, this product details component function. So this function will be called and this JSX code will be returned again. And this time it will be returned with the updated value of this product count variable. Okay, I hope it makes sense here. Now let's go back to our web page. So let's see what happens when the product count is zero. So when I click on this minus button again, you will notice that instead of displaying the numeric value zero, it is displaying this string zero. And that's because of this function, this display formatted product count function. 